Matt Miller of ESPN did a full seven round mock draft with every selection. He did every single selection in this mock draft. And I think it would be interesting to get your take on his 10 selections for the 49ers. Um, the first one being um, the one, the player that we just talked about, uh, Jordan Morgan. What are your thoughts? Just quick, quick thoughts, even though we just talked about it. What's your quick thoughts on, on Jordan Morgan in the first round? Um, I don't like it. I don't, I, you know, it's too low end. Um, you, I, I'd, I'd rather go for Garrett Greenfield or, or one of those guys later. Um, I think this, if you ask me about this, this tackle class, I think alt is super special. I think Fashanu, Fuaga and Latham are really close behind. Mims has the potential to be re really special. Then after that, I think you're, you're looking at, you know, some guys who could be hit and miss. Guyton, Morgan, Paul, Sumatea, Amagaji, Blake Fisher. Um, and then there's the next group that I kind of like. Javon Foster from Missouri. Christian Jones from Texas. Ladarius Henderson from Michigan. Uh, Gottlieb Daisy from Maryland. Garrett Greenfield, I love a lot, from South Dakota State. So I think that next, the real value is in that, in that third tier. I think in the second tier is where the mistakes are going to be made. And guys are going to be overdrafted. And I think that Morgan is one of those guys. I, I you know, nothing against him, but, um, you know, we've already talked about it. I mean, is he a plug and play player? Well, yes, to some degree, but what's the upside of the player? Um, if he's got short arms and you're going to play him a tackle, I don't want a short arm tackle in the first round. You want to take a pugnacious, tough guy, short arm tackle on day three, go for it, but not in round one. Um, with pick 63, Matt Miller has the 49ers selecting Chris Jenkins defensive tackle out of Michigan. Um, so obviously after the loss of Eric Armstead, Matt Miller thinks that the 49ers should go after Chris Jenkins, um, in the second round. Do you have any thoughts about Chris Jenkins? Well, he's a freak workout warrior. I mean, he was on the Bruce Feldman freaks list. He's six three, three hundred pounds. He ran four nine one. Um, he's one of the strongest defensive tackles in the class. I just don't know that he he he's a three technique rusher. I don't know that he plays to his measurables. You know, I mean, last year Dallas took Mozzie and Mozzie out of Michigan, and he had awesome measurables and awesome workout numbers and barely played. Uh, I, I don't know. I, how tough of a guy is Jenkins? I don't know. His dad was a hell of a player at Maryland and in the NFL. Um, the kid is an obvious stud athlete and can really move, but I just question, you know, is, is he in the, his nickname is the mutant. Uh, so he's a mutant workout guy, but is he, is he a, is he a glass cutter as a player? I don't know. I think there are tougher defensive tackles than Jenkins. I think Michael Hall from Ohio State is tougher. Jenkins has better workout numbers, but I'd rather have Hall all day, every day. So I, I don't hate it, but second round for a guy who's a workout warrior who whose tape is just okay, um, that might be an overdraft. Um. With the 94th pick in the third round, uh, Matt Miller has the Niners going back to the Wolverines and select, uh, selecting Zach Zinter, the guard. I don't know if you know anything about Zach Zinter. I've, um, I've, I actually know a little bit about him because I took him in one of my mock drafts after doing a little bit of research on him. The one thing I will say about Michigan you know, offensive linemen is that they got their share of, run, of, of the run game this year. They ran the ball an incredible amount and they did it very efficiently with Blake Corum. Um, and you know, Michigan's just a star studded team, obviously led by Harbaugh. Um, and Zach Zinter, I think is a, I think he has a good potential in the NFL. What do you think about Zinter? I mean, I, I think they're going to have one guard overdrafted and one guard underdrafted. And this is the guy that's going to get overdrafted. I saw Michael Hall dominate this guy in the Michigan, Ohio state game. He missed part of the pre-draft process. He's had a leg injury. 
He's a power run blocker in the run game. I like Zinter if he's healthy, but he's not healthy now. Uh, I don't like him in the third round, though. I, I like him in the fifth round or later. Um, to me, the, the the other guy, Keegan, is less of a technician but more of a tough guy. So I don't know. I mean, Zinter has got his highlight reel blocks are great. He's pancaked some guys, and if you watch his highlights, you're like, wow. But if you watch the lowlights, I mean, he got dominated in conference by some by some players this year. So I got questions about the medical. I got questions about his high level potential. Um, I'd be interested in the fifth round or later, but not in the third. Yeah. Um, with pick one twenty, and now we're getting into the fourth round. I'm not going to blame you if you don't know that some of these guys, I feel like you probably will know some of these guys, but I mean, we're getting, we're getting deep into the draft here. Uh, with pick one twenty four in round four, Matt Miller has the Niners selecting Elijah Jones, cornerback from Boston College. Um, I personally don't know anything about uh, about Elijah. Do you know anything about uh, this player? I like him a lot. I like him a lot. Um, he went to Cardinals Hayes High School in New York. He's he's a Harlem, New York City kid. Um, defensive back, good height, good toughness. You know, there's a lot to like here. I mean, this is a really good football player. He wore number one um, at times for BC. He also wore number 20. He's, he's a, he's a, you know, he was all AC honorable mention. Um, I like him. I really do. I think this is a, this is a good, a, a really a good player. Um, he'll fight you. He's tough. He's aggressive. Um, I like, I like this player. Elijah Jones is, to me would be a really good pick fourth, you know, third round, fourth round, fifth round, somewhere in there. Um, he's, he's, you know, he plays, he's aggressive. He breaks up passes. He forces fumbles. Um, you know, he makes solo tackles. He, he can set the edge in the run game. Um, he's tough. He plays hard. I like him. I like him a lot. Um, it- also in the fourth round, Matt Miller has the Niners selecting Curtis Jacobs, linebacker from Penn State. Um, Penn State's, you know, usually known for the great athletes. I looked up this guy's 40 time. He ran a four five eight, which is not not incredibly fast for a linebacker, but it's it's serviceable. Uh, do you have any thoughts or do you know anything about Curtis Jacobs? Yeah, I've watched Curtis Curtis Jacobs. Um, you know, I watched them play. Was it Ole Miss? I think in the bowl game. And Curtis Jacobs about six one. You know, roughly two thirty. Um, he's a stack backer. You know, he's not a he's not a pass rusher. Um, he's a Maryland kid who went to McDonough High School, and um, I like him. I you know he he's fast. He you know he's he's been well coached. Uh, he was he was named to the Buckus Award watch list this year. Um, I really like him. I think he's a good football player. Penn State coaches up their linebackers really, really well. And, um, you know, this is a football family as well as his cousin, Andrew uh, Leverone, played football at Virginia and for the Carolina Panthers. Um, you know, this is a good kid, too. I mean, he volunteers at his mother's summer camp for underprivileged kids in his neighborhood. Um, you know, he's, he's a good, he's a good player. I mean, I don't think this is like a vintage all time, you know, this is not, you know, the Cowboys guy off the edge or anything like that. You know, sometimes, yeah, he's not, this is not Parsons, but this is a good stacked linebacker who will be productive and make plays. Now I like other guys a little bit more at this position, but I think there's a lot to like with Jacobs. I like that pick. What round was that? Uh, that's pick one thirty-two in the fourth round. Yeah, it's about right, about where he'll go. End of the end of the fourth, I think. Um, now three picks later, they have the Niners selecting, or Matt Miller has the Niners selecting Ben Sinat, a tight end from Kansas State. I know that you, you know, you like a lot of tight ends in this draft. Uh, I haven't heard you mention uh, Sinat. Do you have any thoughts? on Kansas State tight end, Sinat. Yeah, I love him. I, I think he's terrific. He went, he's, he's, um, hometown is, for, he's from, he's an Iowa kid, 6'4", about 250, um, went to Columbus Catholic High School, 
and he's just a good player. I mean, if you watch him, he moves really well. He's thick. Um, he's productive. He can run after the catch. Yeah, I really like him. I really like him. He's, he's, um, uh, you know, he's a, he's a, to me, he, you know, this is an all around athlete. This guy played in high school in baseball, golf, tennis, track, hockey, football. He played it all. Um, and, and if you watch him, he really is an impressive player. Um, he was honorable mention, um, all American by Phil Steele this year. He was a Mackey award semifinalist. Um, he went to the East West shrine, I believe, and the senior bowl. He's an academic all American. So he's smart. Yeah. Sanat is really good. He's a really good tight end. And if the Niners are looking for that second starting tight end that can contribute this year, um, then Sanat could be their guy. And what do you say? What round do you have him in fifth year? No, that's the end of the fourth. Yeah. I mean, that's about, that's pretty good value right there. That's, that's pretty good value. I like, I like Ben Sanat. I know you'll like this next pick. Uh, round five, pick 176. He has, uh, Matt Miller has the Niners selecting Malik Mustafa, safety from Wake Forest, who, in my opinion, before you go off on this guy, he's just, I mean, he's a thumper, obviously. We all know that. But I mean, I think John Lynch likes hard hitting dbs john lynch was a hard-hitting db i think he likes hard-hitting dbs and this guy also is fast he runs a four four eight uh what are your thoughts on malik mustafa well first of all i think it's malik i think he goes by oh, malik is it malik yeah i think it's malik mustafa i mean he was wake forest's team captain he started every game um you know he finished the season with 67 tackles 36 solo tackles so yeah he led the team in solo tackles um he was tied for second on the team. He forced a fumble. Uh, he returned an interception for 50 yards in their win against Vandy. He had 13 tackles against Syracuse. So yeah, I, I, I love Malik Mustafa. I think he I think he offers you something in the coverage game, and I think he's a real, as you said, a thumper. Um, was a great high school player uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, led his team to a 16 and0 record in 2019. Helped the win, win the state title that that year. Blocked a kick in the second half of the championship game. Um, five interceptions, sixteen pass breakups. He was the captain. I mean, there's a lot to like about Mustafa. He's a good player. Um, Wake is a really good school. This guy's played against some very good players. If you watch him, his anticipation and break on the ball is outstanding. His toughness is is almost unparalleled. Yeah, I, this is a guy that. If I'm a, if I'm the Niners, I have this guy circled, and I'm trying to you know get value by picking him in the right spot. But uh, at the end of the day, I may have to pick this guy early, just because of the need at at safety. But I yeah, I love Mustafa. Now in round six, we're getting pretty deep into the draft. They have the Niners taking a guy named Anthony Gold. Uh, for wide receiver from Oregon State, who's a five eight slot receiver who ran a four three nine forty, so a burner, a burner from uh, Oregon State. What do you think about Anthony Gold? Yeah, I mean, this draft. That's the intriguing part about this draft. There are some really really fast guys, and Anthony Gould is one of them from uh, from Oregon. He's just a he's just a burner, as you said. He's a tiny burner, but he's a burner. And um, I, I I think he's he's a really good player. Now I I like some of the other guys a little bit more. I mean, there's Tulu Griffin from Mississippi State. He's also a super fast. Um, Jaquan Burton from Florida Atlantic. He's a little bigger and and fast. Um, I love Tyler Harrell from Miami as a guy who just can absolutely take the top off the defense. And he's enormously fast. Um, and there, you know, there's other guys as well besides. But, but yeah, gold is interesting. Um, he, you know, Bub Means from Pittsburgh is another guy who runs really fast for the stopwatch. He's bigger. So, I mean, it's just going to be who, who do you like? But me, there's no question the Oregon kid's got a lot of speed. And if, and you, when you watch him, you can see that speed on film. I mean, he's really, 
you take a bad angle, he he's going to be gone. But um, and maybe if the if the kickoff rules are changed to a degree, maybe a guy like that will be somebody that they, you know, really center on. Uh, I say Oregon. I think Oregon State, right? Um, Oregon State, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's a he's a he's a really good player. He's he's from he's from Leavenworth, Kansas. He was Pac-12 honorable mention, first team all Pac-12, and um, you know he's. He's a good football player. He's super, super fast. And that's the, that's the, you know, the difference making speed. Um, but um, I kind of wonder about the durability at that weight, but you know, he's very lean, but he's definitely a home run hitter. He's definitely a guy that, you know, he's five, eight, he's a tiny little guy, but he's definitely the kind of guy that can take it to the house. If you miss him, if you, you know, you miss him, uh, miss a tackle against him in special teams. Um, as I said, I like some of the other burners a little bit more, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I could see, I could see them going. I agree with Matt's assertion here that they, that he could see them drafting a speedster wide receiver late in the draft. And I have it down as Tyler Harrell. He has it down as Anthony gold. We'll, we'll find out, but yeah, I, I think that's likely that they will take, a speed threat stretch the field vertical wide receiver late on day three yeah i'm not typically a fan of smaller faster receivers just because i feel like um it takes a very specific play style and it takes a very specific situation for them to be successful but when you're this late in the draft um especially with the new kickoff rules you know i think i think there's a it's definitely a project or a it's a shot in the dark a little bit but um it's definitely possible last two picks here uh you usually this late in the sixth round i'm not going to recognize that many names uh just because i haven't done the deep dives that you have into the nfl draft i've i've done a decent amount but i do know this name jace mcclellan running back from alabama who was the starting running back at alabama uh last season um pretty good prospect i mean he ran a four five forty he averaged five six a carry with Alabama over the last four seasons. Uh, what do you think about Jace McClellan? You know, it's funny because Bama will have sleepers, and this kid might be one of them. He's a Lado Texas kid, um, stepped into the starting running back only as a senior, and you know played well, played well. Yeah, I mean, I like him at this point in the draft. You know, do you do the Niners? go for a guy like this, or do they wait for Frank Gore's kid? I think they're more likely to go for Frank Gore's kid, but you know, this guy was a really good high school player. Excuse me. He was a four-star prospect. Um, he was really, really good. So yeah, I, I think that's a, that's kind of a sleeper pick. I like that one. Yeah. I mean, he's not, uh, extremely quick. He's, he runs a four five, which is pretty fast, but not burning. Um, and, but I, it seems like Alabama backs have been pretty, uh, you know, pretty successful in the NFL at this point in the draft. I, I like the pick, uh, with the last pick in Matt Miller's, uh, seven round mock draft, he has the Niners selecting Nick. I can't even, I can't pronounce this, pronounce this Nick Gargulio. Have you heard of Nick Gargulio, the center from no. South Carolina? Yeah. Never heard of either. Nick Gargulio. Yeah, but I can well, tell you, I could look something up on him. Nick Gargulio. We're now we're doing our Nick Gargulio deep dive. He's six five three ten. Nick Gargulio he used to play for Yale. Let me so, look him up here. That's the last. That's the last pick. Let's see the draft. Let me tell you about Nick Gargulio. Six five three ten grad student from Yorktown Heights, New York. He looks like a tough guy. <laughs> guy really. He he was third team All SEC. He's a grad transfer from Yale, as you said. Played one season for the Gamecocks. It's interesting. Yeah, uh, Gamecocks got a couple. Dante Miller, the running back, is also a, a Ivy League transfer from Brown. They went to the Ivy League at South Carolina for uh, for some for some reinforcements this year. Um. 
He went to Summers High School in Lincolndale, New York, played offensive and defensive tackle, two-time Section 1 All-League, two-time first-team All-Section, named to the All-State team. Uh, Also played basketball, so he's probably a pretty good athlete. Offensive line MVP. So Here's an interesting one. He's a 91th. 91st percentile in the vertical jump had a 32 and a half inch vertical jump, which is 91st. Percentile. Also working on his master's in sports and entertainment management, already got a bachelor's degree from Yale with a double major of econ and poli sci football and basketball camp counselor enjoys tennis and golf. Well, I mean, yeah. there's, it sounds good. We'll see. I mean, how good of a player is he? I don't know. Well, that's the full draft. So just to recap, the Niners drafted Jordan Morgan, Chris Jenkins, Zach Zinter, Elijah Jones, Curtis Jacobs, Ben Sinat, Malik Must- or Malik Mustafa, Anthony Gold, Jace McClellan, and Nick Gargulio. So that is three offensive linemen, two or one defensive lineman, a running back, a wide receiver, a safety, a linebacker. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I would give that a B, B minus C plus. Why? Because, I mean, I do like Malik Mustafa in the fifth round. I do like Ben Sinat in the fourth round. I do like Elijah Jones in the fourth round. But Zinter has some injury questions, and I think there's better players there. Jenkins, um, you know, great workout guy, but is he a, how great of a football player is he? And then Jordan Morgan, a short-armed, you know, guard slash center at 31 as an, you know, as an offensive tackle. Um, I think his ceiling is low. So I, I, I don't, you know, I would say it's a C plus draft. I yeah. like some of those early, those mid rounds picks. Um, but I think they kind of squandered some of the high picks again. I, yeah. I mean, it could be a decent draft looking back. I, I do. I mean, I've, we've already said this, but I do think that Jordan Morgan would play interior and, you know, he might be a good, a good piece interior, but if you're drafting to fill that right tackle spot, uh, I would look elsewhere. Yeah. 